My name is Emily Robbins Sharp, and I'm an associate professor of English here at Keene State. English is a versatile major with options in literature, writing, and secondary education. In our shared study of the written word, we research how historical, social, and cultural contexts shape literary works, including those works that are produced by cultures who have been historically marginalized. We investigate connections between literary works as well, thinking about how they refer to each other and why. And we study the scholarly debates and theories that shape our field. My own work focuses on how it authors write about war and conflict. I'm really fascinated by how individuals use their writing as a way to respond to the world around them. And at the same time, how the literature that they write is impacted by these events. This gets at some bigger questions, too, of how we each understand ourselves and our responsibilities to others in relation to struggles going on in local and global communities. For instance, in my course on Holocaust literature, we study fiction, memoir, and poetry. Some of it is written by Holocaust survivors and some by authors from subsequent generations. One of the works of literature that we study is called Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood. It's a novel that was adapted into a play and then into a musical and then into a film. These adaptations raise some interesting questions about how the story resonates with successive generations. In another course that I teach on post-colonial novels, we trace how the legacy of British colonization is represented through characters, settings, plot, and language. One novel that we read is called The Lonely Londoners by Sam Selvin. It incorporates an absolutely dazzling number of different Englishes from across the Caribbean and Great Britain, which are spoken by the characters and the narrator in an often stream of consciousness style. In other words, the novel's use of language is itself a commentary on colonialism's continued impact. Recently, I published a book of literary criticism focused on Canadian and American literature about the Spanish Civil War, entitled Mosaic Fictions. The Spanish Civil War was a civil war in name only, as supporters of the newly democratic country fought back against an attempted international fascist coup. In my book, I focus on how Jewish Canadian writers represented the war, and I bring their writings into conversation with overlapping North American networks of Jewish, Black, immigrant, female, and queer writers. Some of the writers I look at volunteered on the front lines of the war, while others remained an ocean away from Spain, or else wrote decades after the war's conclusion, the outbreak of World War II and the Holocaust. All of these writers, however, were concerned with the transnational repercussions of the Spanish Civil War at the same time that they were aware of its local and even personal impact. Despite the Spanish Civil War's tragic conclusion, it remains a vital touchstone of hope and solidarity for writers in North America. Writers often write about Spain as a way of thinking through what it means to be a citizen and a member of a community. These are discussions that we continue to have today, and I trace their roots all the way back to literature of the 1930s about another country's civil war.